Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We are your host, Jeremiah. And Rafina Antonetti. Hey, we're here this morning. To talk this. straight about the Bible. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, that's all right. You know, as we talk straight about the Bible. You were still talking. That's all right. <laughs> but you went straight ahead. That's good. <laughs> As we as we as we continue to study the Word of God yes. and we talk straight about the Bible, Amen. our lives become straighter. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because we're crooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know the. Well, you know, you know what? One of the words of sin and and iniquity is is we malfunction. Mm-hmm. That's that's. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We're a mal- mm-hmm. we're a malfunctioning people. Mm. Of course, we are holy in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Right? Thank you that being a new creation has nothing to do with us being straight. Amen. Because then we won't have to be a new creation if yeah. we're straight. Yeah. Jesus said that he's the he's the physician, and he came not for those who are healthy, because they were proclaiming some of them, "Hey, I'm righteous. We're good. We have it." He said, I didn't come for you. I'm the great physician, he said. I came for those who are sick. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I was sick. Sick with sin, sick with with my life. I was malfunctioning, listening to the voices of evil reason. Wow. I know about that. Yeah, but now today, (laughs) oh, Today, do you hear his voice? Do you hear the voice of the shepherd? You know, we're talking about the spirit of adultery. Yes. This whole chapter five, matter of fact, what? what, I mean, who knows more about adultery than Solomon? Solomon. Who who, who knows (laughs) more about, about this stuff than Solomon? You know, he was a professional. He did a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, we have to understand one thing about God, that he leads us in the way that is right. If we look at him and we keep our eyes on his word, we will never stray. At least to, at least to the point of destruction, right? Right. All right. Because his word is straight. <clears throat> his word is straight. I love that, folks. Take that into there, right? His word is straight. Wherever you're going crooked, get back to the word. All right. My son. Hey, you know, that's the first thing. I love that. We keep going back to verse one because it keeps it's it's kind of the springboard, right? Yes. We have we haven't yes. gone so much, you know, into the chapter five. We're, we're right here at at verse seven, but my son, listen to the, if I skip from verse one down through verse six, I'm going to skip, I'm going to use the, the most important mm-hmm, words, okay? Mm-hmm. My son, my wisdom, your ear, my understanding. My son, listen to my wisdom, bow your ear to my understanding. Watch this. My son, my wisdom, your ear, my understanding. Keep discretion. Your lips, keep knowledge. The lips of a strange woman, honey on her plate, on her palate, smoother than oil. But afterwards, she is like bitter wormwood, Mm. sharp as a double-edged sword, but she'll cut you in and out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her feet are death. Her steps are hell. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Are you hearing this? And... Listen to this. Unless you meditate, unless you should meditate on the path of life, her tracks are movable. There's no steadiness. Nope. Unstable. Aimless. <laughs> Aimless. Aimless. Oh, I love that, folks. Grab that one. That that was precious. Come on. Aimless. And then he says, you cannot know them. No matter how much you try to understand sin, you will, not, you will never know it because it is eternally evil. And, and the sad thing is, is that she doesn't know it either. That's right. That's right. But as we study the word of God, we find just how wide the river of truth is. I, I'm swimming like never before in my life. It's been, I, I keep saying it and I'll keep saying it until it comes, God willing. 
Oh, it's going to be almost 40 years next this, this year coming that my Lord has kept me. That my Lord has kept me. My wife is 30, Four. 34 Four. years. Four. Think about that. Listen, that's not a fly. This, that's not a, 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 what do you call it? Um, a fly by night. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And let me tell you something. We need to be steady. We all sin. Come on. We all sin. Mm -hmm. this, 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 we are, listen, we all sin because we're supposed to sin because we are sinners. So that's going to happen. That's the law of sin. We say we're supposed to sin. Absolutely. You're going to sin. We can't help it. You know, even when the Lord says, don't, you know, don't eat that, that cake, you know, it's going to make you sick. And we say, but I got to have it. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Someone said to me, it was a pastor, you know, we we're talking. I said, he said, you know, I got free will. He told me, I, I could do whatever I want. I said, you could do whatever you want? He said, I can do whatever I want. I said, are you sure about that? He, he said, yes. I said, I want you to will not to sin anymore. And he paused and he said, I can't do that. I said, why not? You can do whatever you want. He said, because I am a sinner. Huh. You see, the, the, what, what does the nature of a dog do? It lives out the nature of a dog. Course. What does the nature of a pig do? It it lives out the nature of a pig. We have two natures living in us. And at times, we're going to give in. But thank God for the grace of God, His Word, His Holy Spirit, the blood of Christ. Woo! We don't have to stay on the road that is perverse. Amen. Amen. Now, knowing more about the subject, I want to become more acquainted with Christ. Isn't that what it's all about? Now, remember that the enemy works through iniquity. That's our iniquity. We have iniquity. We were born with sin. We were born in iniquity. Our nature, Rafina, naturally leans toward evil. If you, you if, now let me tell you, come on. If you, if you believe what I just said, if you know that it is true, rather, Go ahead and say amen. Because through perversities of our own, he brings us to a place of compromise. That's, that's the problem, compromising. But when you know Jesus Christ, you know wisdom. Look what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians. It says, but those, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks... That means it doesn't matter who you are. This same Messiah is the power and God's wisdom. Amen. Wow, come on. You see, that's where you say, oh, I, I, I can't help, I can't do it. He says, well, yes, you can, because he's the power and the wisdom for us to get out of trouble. 1 Corinthians 1.30, same, watch this. It is his doing that you are united with Messiah Yeshua. He has become wisdom for us from God and righteousness and holiness and redemption as well. Do you know that this here represents Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, because it was through wisdom that God created the whole world. That's why the Bible says wisdom is supreme. Wisdom is the principle. Get wisdom. Mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Get now, nah, get it, get it, get it. Then watch this. After you have wisdom, look what happens. What follows? Righteousness. Why? Because the righteousness of God is wisdom. And after you learn what is right, your life changes and you become more sanctified, more holy. More and mm -hmm. once you become more like the character of God, did you know that the character of God he is holy. When God reveals himself first in scripture, you know what? He reveals himself as holy. Someone said, no, love, righteous. I said, God, the Bible says he is holy, holy, holy. People are forgetting that. We don't, we don't get a lot of people talking about his holiness today. And once you understand that character, your redemption is nigh. Amen. You know, um, in, in Proverbs 5, 7, as we're talking about, um, Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. 
Solomon is urging, again, we're going over, Solomon is urging his sons that to listen to him and not to abandon his wise counsel as Jeremiah is saying, the wisdom that God gives us. And as a parent or a teacher, um, like I mentioned yesterday, we can give our children and our students sound teaching, but it's up to each individual to be responsible and to incorporate that teaching into their life. The words of God gives us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But what do we do with it? We have to act upon it. We have to apply it to our lives. So yesterday we started talking about the in the word here mm. shama <laughs> which means to hear with attention wow. or interest wow. or give heed and so that word there has three hebrew um letters that goes with it and jeremiah's touched on it yesterday but i like to Go also ahead. touch on it a little Go bit ahead. because yeah um, that, first of all, the Shama is a prayer or a proclamation that we do, um, to, to the Lord. It's, it's, it's a verse, a scripture, um, in Deuteronomy six, four through nine, which says, hear, O Israel, give ear, attend, be obedient, Man. yield, wow. yeah. listen, listen, Lord, the Lord is our God, the Lord is is one and you shall love the lord With see all. it don't say maybe you should love the lord or mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um if you feel like loving the lord you mm -hmm. can love him no it says you shall love you shall love the mm -hmm. lord your god with all your heart Mm -hmm. And with all your soul, and like Jeremiah was just saying, the guy was saying, I have a will. I have my own will. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> okay? But the Bible says here, you shall love mm -hmm. the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Yeah. And these words which I command, okay, you today shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them thoroughly to your children and you shall speak to them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign upon your hands and they shall be for a reminder between your eyes mm. and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. You know, something interesting about the Shama also, do you know, you sometimes you see in the morning, well, mo every day you see them in the morning. If you're, if you're among the Jewish community, you will see a lot of men walking with their children early in the morning, five, five thirty in the morning, because they want to get to the temple right away and begin to Shama. That's the, you have to Shama every day. According to the Jews, what we say, I don't have to do that as Christian. Oh, really? Or, or you mean, um, uh, here, Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Mm -hmm. That's what they, they, that's the first thing they have to do every morning to remind themselves before you leave into the world to work and do what you have to do. These three things must be in your mind. Shama. Here, listen, O Israel, pay attention, bend your ear. To bow your ear means be humble. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Hearken. Hearken, Hearken unto the Lord. Escucha el Señor. Listen to the Lord. But now, what you, look what he says. And now hear me, O sons, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. This, that's, what, that's what verse 7 says. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't depart. Don't leave what I am telling you. You know, I, you know, we could say a lot of things to this, but we need to stay there. Any person, every person should be on guard against those who use flattery and smooth talk. Hmm. Lips that are as sweet as honey that would lead us into sin. Amen. The best advice is to take a detour and even avoid conversations with such people. Paul said, do not even talk about it. Avoid it. Have nothing to do, he said, with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Are you here? Fruitless, 
fruitless. You take a bite of that apple, you take a bite of that orange or that grape, and you find out that it's empty. And and that's interesting that you would say a bite of because the first letter in that word of Shama is Shin. And one of the meanings to that is tooth. It's a tooth. It's a tooth. Teeth, yeah. Teeth. To break up and grind food. And this means many times listen, many times we don't we don't have the strength to to break something with our hands, right? So we use our teeth. <laughs> Come on. You remember those pop, you know, those bottles, you know, you used to, you know, uh, break open with your teeth. So this this is strength that brings us to to the the next word, which is there's five there's five meanings to this word shin. Go ahead. The the first one was teeth, breaking and chewing, mm -hmm, chewing. Mm -hmm. The second one is steadfast. Mm -hmm. We need to be steadfast in in the things of God. Um, we need to be strong in our faith, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on in our lives, no matter what situation. You know, our finances may go up and down. Um, um. You know, all, all kinds of things that we're, we're going through inflation right now, but or recession. I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> whatever it's called, we're going through it and we need to stay steadfast on the word of God. The third word is change. And this is all coming from one word, Shama. This is coming from one word here. Yeah. Are we understanding this? That when you break down the word, the, the word, when you break down the word, you get so much more out of it. Mm -hmm. And the third one is change. And that means that when a person realizes that he has faults, that he is not perfect in his intellect or understanding or his knowledge, okay, God can change that. God can make he can, the person can make an attempt to improve these qualities in their life. The fourth one is return. No matter where you are in your life, no matter where you are in your situation, you can return. That's the beautiful thing about Christ. No matter uh, this week I can't pray or this week I can't read or this week I can't study, but you can always turn around and do it the next, the next week. We can always return. His his arms are open wide. We can always return. And the and the fifth word is year. And this leads us into um, the last interpretation, which means a year contains four seasons. And in every season, every season represents something to the Jewish people. Amen. But we need to remember that there is a season for everything, as Solomon points out in Ecclesiastics. The next letter in that word, um, um, Shama, is Mim, which is which means uh, water. Mm -hmm. A flowing fluid, yeah. And there are two forms of the Mim. One is open and one is closed. And, and it's expressed that the open mem represents the revealed Torah, and the closed mem represents the Torah secrets. I thought that when I read that. Yeah, that's just amazing stuff. You know, that's that's just studying the letters, folks. That's why we say, you know, we talk about the letters is because we need to say what God says in His Word, mm -hmm. and we don't we don't understand the depths of His Word sometimes until we go deeper. My wife is going deeper. We're going deeper. Because we we know that God is giving us truth, because His word is truth. I love that. Last and, and and what was it? Um, oh, and that there? was Mim, yeah. Oh, okay. But but you know the 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 word Mim has a value, a number value, a um, gematria, which Jeremiah is always talking about the gematria, the number, and that number is forty. That's right. And that forty, oh my gosh, it is a concept that means. Um, Metaphor, this is oh, metaphoric for, yeah. forces, metaphoric, for it. metaphoric. Yeah, that's right. I get those words. Well, transformation is yeah. the other word for it. <laughs> transformation, like after forty days, the embryo of a child begins to assume mm -hmm. a recognizable form. Mm -hmm. So, what else happens in, in, with the number forty? In forty days, forty years. In forty days, it rained on earth during the flood. Moses was forty when he was exiled. 
he was he was a shepherd for 40 years. Did you know that on three separate, and I just found this out, on three separate times, Moses <laughs> ascended the mountain for 40 days each? That's right, yeah. How could he do that? And he, and, and he was with the Israelites wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And he spied out the land for, he sent out his spies to, to scout the land for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Jesus was in the wilderness tempted by the devil for 40 days. 40 days. As a man tested and tried to show us mm -hmm. that when we, that slippery snake comes crawling, we can overcome him and not be overcome by him like Adam and Eve was. A transformation takes place in our lives when we live by the word of God. And I just want to mention this last word, Ayin. Oh, Ayin. Ayin. The I. The I. Ah. Salvation. Ah. And, and, and we can visualize and see the redemption of the Lord of and convey this message to others. When one can lift up, it also says, when one can lift up one's eyes and see God. And when, when I read that, these scriptures just flooded me. And it says <laughs> in Isaiah 40, 26, lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these mm -hmm. heavenly bodies. Mm -hmm. The one who mm -hmm. brings out their hosts by number. He calls them all by name, by name because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. In Genesis 13, 14, the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had left, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Word. In Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, I saw, saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high I and lifted, lifted up. up with the train of his whole, uh, of his oh, royal no. Um, robe filling the temple. The interesting thing about these words, lift up is the word Nasa. And I know you've heard Jeremiah say mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. Nasa, like the, the NASA, NASA like That's NASA, the English word Nasa, you know, and when the, when the rockets, when the rockets go up, you can see they're that you lifting see up. That's right. They're lifting up and it's to carry. I mean, I just got really excited about that. Raise up, raise up. To burn. Be, be, to burn, to be carried off, <laughs> right? So in essence, what it's Solomon is saying to his sons and, and what God is saying to us is to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All these words, when you put them together, it's such a beautiful thing. Don't let your circumstances, your location, your condition keep you from being and remaining steadfast in God and in his word. No matter what evil may come your way to tempt you, remember 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience. But God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Hold on, sorry. But along with the temptation, he provides a way out as well wow. so that you will be able to endure it. But remember, there is a season for everything, but we have the living water within us. In Christ, we stand, we live, and we are his righteousness. So just all we need to do is lift up our eyes. <laughs> Solomon urges his Take sons, Go ahead. lift up your eyes. Go ahead. Look to the heavens to where your help, your strength, your power comes from. It comes from him and him alone. And that's what God is saying to us today. When he, when Solomon says, speaks to his son, he's telling him, listen, when you get in that position of temptation, lift up your eyes. That's right. He's saying to us, when that temptation comes our way, lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes. There's a lot more we're going to say about this. And Rafina is filled this morning. <laughs> She's like letting this thing Lift go. Up your eyes. Let me tell you something, right? We're gonna end with this just for today. We're gonna we're gonna get back to this. You see, it's, it's, it's eternal. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna talk about um, what happened in the desert when they took their eyes off the Lord. Mm. 
because that's what she just basically is speaking about mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to share some other things about the shin, the three heads of the shin. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> okay. So we're going to look to the Lord. Nasa can be burned for the world or burned for God. Lot burned his eyes toward Sodom. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. lifted his eyes right. and saw Sodom. He went that way. After he left, the Lord told Abraham, now lift up your eyes and look the other way. That's right. So watch this now. And really, it's, it's tremendous. Lot looked toward Sodom because it was green. It looked beautiful. <laughs> Abraham told, uh, God told Abraham, look to the other side. It's a desert. Mm -hmm. Why should not? Wait. Why not? Well, because we are people who understand and learn God in the middle of the heat, the desert. Amen. God bless you. And until we meet again. Shalom. Oh, that's a shin. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>